Okay, so if somebody ask you what is Jonang, Jonang Ba. So Jonang is name, Jonang Ba is like possessor. So just possessor. You put possessor or you not put possessor, that's only different. Okay, drive or driver. So if somebody ask you what is Jonang Ba, the answer is Jonangpa is uh, a Tibetan Buddhist tradition. Had name, made name Jonang in 13th century. They made Jonang uh, because they made uh, with location. The locate called Jomo Nangpa is very sacred uh, place called Jomo Nang. Uh, so there's a female deity uh, called Nagjermo. So near that valley uh, called Jomona. So uh, in 13th century, Kenpang uh, Tukjitsondu renounced a uh, great Galajara master called Kenpang uh, Tukjitsondu. He made the permanent resident of Jonang there. So since then, called Jonang, Jonang Pa or Jonang. But the Jonang Pa, the lineage is much longer than the Jonang Pa name. So the lineage go back to uh, Buddha Shakyamuni. But there's two lineages. Jonang Pa hold a very special two lineages. So first, the special teaching called Genton, Genton Vivu, Genton Majamika. Why that is very special? Because, firstly, Buddha taught three Dharma wheels. But the Jonangpa Genton Majamika Primary, the teaching is according to the third dharma veil. Why third dharma veil is more special than second dharma veil? Because Buddha taught teaching for sentient beings first teach fundamentals, and then uh, then sentient beings, you know. Uh, we call the fortunate beings, uh, developed, they developed, then he teach more and more profound. So for this reason, the Jonangpa Genton view is incredibly profound because according to the third Dharma veil. Okay? That doesn't mean not contradictory the first and second Dharma veil. They all include it. And then maybe you have question, say, why the third Dharma veil is more profound than uh, the other uh, Dharma veils because the other, some other scholars, they argue in second Dharma veil, talking only emptiness is more uh, definitive. And the third Dharma veil is not definitive because Buddha himself, Dorde Gompa Nindir, which means that sutra, explains Buddha himself, which one is definitive, which one is not definitive. Buddha himself explained. In this, he explained that for, when he talk in first Dharma where he said, this is Lanam Chipa, Kam Chipa, Sopi Gir Nisikirwa, which means, Lanam Chipa means there is a bab, still there is a bab. Okay? There is, there is not timeless. It is not uh, uh, indefeatable. And second Dharma where he taught the same thing. And when we, he taught the third Dharma where he said, this teaching is Lana Mamchipa, Kap Mamchipa, Sopi Ji Anisikirwa Mayano, which means there's no above. There is no more above. There's no more a definitive. There is no more 
that this is timeless. This is not, this is defeat, indefeatable. There, there's no more agu. That's he himself taught. That's it is why uh, Third Dharma is more profound. So Jyotanpa, uh, <coughs> as Jyotanpa uh, view, uh, referred to the Third Dharma well. Who explained the Buddha's teachings? Jyotanpa referred to Bodhisattva Maitreya, which means Bodhisattva Maitreya is a tenth level of Bodhisattva. According to the Sutra, he is tenth level of Bodhisattva. According to the Tantra, he is the Buddha. So referred to his books, that's why, his texts. And commented by Asanga. Asanga is third Burmi level. Third Burmi level. Referred to the Asanga. And Vazabandhu. Vazabandhu is known as second omniscient, which means like Buddha. And then Kangameter, and then Awadata, and then uh, Kachenjoni, and then Tramze Sanza. All these Indian incredible uh, realization masters referred to them. And then come to the Tibet. Through these teachings, completely trans transfer this unbroken lineage, and then finally, like uh, uh, sixteenth, you know, sixteenth lineage holder, Chiston uh, Jamyan. That is the Torpopa's Lama. Torpopa is the seventeenth, seventeenth this lineage holder from the Buddha. So that's why is it is very very special so that is according to the sutra lineage and tolpopa referred his name many many sutras buddha himself called him this and this such and such this year this time this located this person call my name which means omniscient. We call it Kenchen Tolpopa. Kenchen means omniscient Tolpopa. So he referred many, many teachings. Tolpopa, his name, location, very, very clearly, you know, can't mistake, can't, you know, you don't need to interpret anything. Just exactly a Dham Sutra, Tsukhtur Nambar Atakala, many sutras and tantras uh, referred his name. He is an incredible one, okay? And not only just Buddha referred it, and on his time, and he, he is completely superior among the, or any other scholars and, you know, these realizers, masters. Like a moon in the, in the sky, in, 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 among, among the stars, the moon and among the stars. So like that, so. That's why uh, Torpopa. And then uh, Torpopa is like 17. Then, then con through continue these lineages. And after, after Taranata is like 27, 28, like that. So then continue. Now we are in like 40, you know, 40s. One lineage we're talking about. There's many lineage. And then Tantric lineage. Tibetans, Tibetan traditions, they have all four classes of Tantrayana. Everybody has. Jonaba, same thing. But what they don't have today, Jonaba had, is Kalachara. So Kalachara is incredible, again, special teaching. Buddha Sheikh he taught, he taught form of Sambhogakaya form, Galachagra form. He taught Galachagra form and then he taught it. Not he taught, he as a monk, simple robes, and he didn't throw that way. He taught, taught that uh, 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 South India, Korwarko, Kanda Kaka, 
Karnataka. That place, Hwarden, Rifong Jin Shostin, we call. Uh, there, he taught, he appears as Kala Chakra form, and then he taught all the teachings, and Kala Chakra is a primary teaching, and the other is, is like secondary teaching. He taught at the same time. So that time, that's special, that's really special teaching because this is not just humans and gods and everybody involved, everybody receives. But the main, main Kala Chakra holder is the Shambhala Kin, Su Chantakirti. So we don't really know exactly today how long Kala Chakra teachings remained our earth and since that time. We don't know really exactly. We only know later Galachagra Pada uh, Manju Vajra. He, in Tibet is called Tujab Chemo, he went to Shambhala and he brought back the Galachagra teaching. Okay, that time, 10th or 11th century. There's many scholars a little bit arguing. Okay, so how this happened is. That Su Chantra, you know, Shambhala Kin, he received all teachings, you know, and he went to Shambhala. Shambhala is not something we scientifically we can prove, okay? As Shambhala is uh, something to do with our earth, something, it's not like, uh, not fantasize, it's not completely like a pure land, uh, something to do with us, something related to our world, something to do with like Himalayas, mountains. Yet we cannot find scientifically exactly. It is, uh, it is spiritual realm, okay? Spiritual realm connected in this world and connected with us. That's Shambhala. He went there and 96 million cities and many castes, many different religions, everything became Galachagra practitioners. Through seven kings, called seven kings, Suchanta first and then seven kings, didn't become all uh, one caste, one religion, until seven kings, okay? Uh, after that first uh, Manju uh, Kirti, he convert all teachings, Kalachara practitioner, all spiritual, everybody become. So that's why I call Rigden, because Rigden means all caste and religions included. Included means become one, become a union. So that's why I call Rigden. Then first Rigden, second Rigden, we, we have more 24 Rigdens. But the 11th Rigden, that time, Rigden Gyarka. At that time, uh, uh, we got uh, teaching uh, our land. Until then, we didn't got it. Okay, they hold in the Shambhala. So, we may have, you know, individual practitioners, Kalachagra practitioners, but not, not in the public a lot. So, and then, in the 11th, that Rigden's time, Kala Chakra Pada, we call Tujab Chemo, and his real name, I think, Manju Vajra. First, his, his, uh, his personal deity uh, prophesied, you go north. And he went north, and he met emanation of Rigden. Emanation of Rigden gave him initiation, and he practiced six months, and then he developed, you know, miracle powers. And that, through this miracle power, he went to Shambhala, and then he re uh, received teachings from Ray Rigdon. I don't know how long, and then he came back, and then he taught the Kalachagra. So that time in India, incredible Buddhism, you know, incredible flourished that time, especially Tantagyana. But Kalachagra, another special form of Tantagyana. So he taught that, and his 12 disciples become a rainbow body. Okay? And then one of his uh, that's, uh, disciples called Dujab Chongwa. 
and they call Shirbata. Shirbata and uh, we call second Tujab, okay? He, he's uh, the best, uh, he's the disciple of Transform, and there is, uh, in, in Ngondro we say, Jatin Nalin Tagbala Surandip, Tarwan, okay? Uh, Bodhbata. Bodhbata, and why we say Nalin Tagbala Surandip? Because he become Nalinda, Nalinda leader, okay? Nalinda universe. That means incredibly, just not just scholar, but, you know, incredibly exceptional. That's why. So that time they said, through the Kala Charatantri and transformed people more than any or other Tantriyanas uh, practitioners to transform, uh, we call Tripatu, become Mahasiddha. Okay? So uh, that kind of uh, is powerful. Kalachagra, that charm. And so, and his uh, uh, the disciple, Panchinder Dawangombo, he came to Tibet three times. And the rest, most of his life, I think he spent in Tibet. So he taught uh, uh, Tibetan, uh, that Tibetan person called uh, Rolotzawa. Uh, Namhatsak, Lama Harji Gomba, Lama Tipchin Yumo, those things he taught. So this taught, translate everything, is very special. There's some some other Galachagra, you know, like lineages gone on. But this one very special because Panchin Dawangombo, he spent most of time in his his life in Tibet. He speak in fluent in Tibetan in Indian, that's why translation is very special, he's a very special person. Actually, he born is like a uh, uh, Muslim family. Father is Muslim, mother is Buddhist, and then first he have to become Muslim, and he's uh, Islam, he follow Islam, he teach, studies everything, and then he not good, not satisfied, then he seek Buddhism, you know, that's why he went. That's why he developed incredibly. So the Panchin Dawangombo is between Tibet and India. That's why he came, Kalachara. That's that's tradition we could draw, draw look. Kalachara have two major uh, translations called Raluk and Droluk. This one is Droluk. So Droluk, Dipika, Raluk, Fiapika, we say. Fiapika means Ra, ra tradition is good to intellectual and this draw is good to practice and transform so but this Jonova tradition is really really incredible because not only just these two traditions but 17 different traditions converted uh, together okay uh, in Kampanthuk Jesodu that 13th century